Hey guys, so after the fallout over my last video where I discussed why some programmers tend to choose Mac over Windows, I thought I'd shake things up a bit and go for a bit more of a redeeming topic. So today I'm going to be talking about which laptops are best to buy for Linux. No, this isn't becoming a laptop review channel, though I thought it would be an interesting and hopefully redeeming follow up. With very few manufacturers making Linux specific laptops, it can often be confusing trying to figure out which laptop is going to be compatible with Linux and just which one's going to work best and is going to be worth your money. So if anything, I hope this video points you in the right direction. But before we get into it, a little word from today's sponsor, me. Malduino is the Arduino based bad USB, inject keystrokes at lightning speed, gain a shell, change someone's desktop wallpaper. With the Elite version, simply store and select between up to 16 different scripts on a micro SD card. To find out more, see the link in the video description. So why would you even want a Linux laptop? Well, I'm sure for a large portion, most of you guys, it's because you want to be elite hacksaws. And that's fine. Though Linux systems are generally a lot more secure than their Windows counterparts, virus associated risks are generally really small, so not really any money spent on antivirus. Also, Linux is for the most part free, so no license key nonsense. So there are many Linux distributions, though for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be focusing on how well the laptops run at Ubuntu, just to keep things simple. And besides, Ubuntu is really user friendly and has a pretty interface. So in no particular order, let's have a look at my top picks. So this is probably the easiest recommendation, especially for beginners, and that's a Dell XPS 13 Developers Edition. It's exactly the same as the regular XPS 13, which has a reputation of being very good. However, this version comes with Ubuntu rather than Windows 10. You aren't saving any money here compared to the regular XPS 13, unfortunately. Dell probably gets those OEM keys really cheap these days. Though the fact that this comes pre-installed with Ubuntu by the manufacturer themselves really inspires a lot of confidence that it'll just work. If you've ever installed Linux on a laptop before, you'll know that it can require a lot of tweaking to get right. Think Wi-Fi drivers, sound cards, ah, it's a pain, an absolute pain. Though here, Dell seem to have done all that hard work for you. Though apparently there is still one crippling downside with this laptop, and that's that people have taken to the forums complaining that this version still comes with a Windows key. Only to be misunderstood and to be told that Ubuntu is free and can be installed without a key. But anyway, if you've got some cash to splash, then this option may be for you. Unless you live in the UK, because, because we, just, we just don't get nice things. Secondly, if you want the Linux laptop built to your specifications, then System76 is where it's at. Simply pick a laptop shell and then choose what you want inside it. It's that simple. And of course, this comes with full compatibility confidence. Each of their laptops comes pre-installed with either Ubuntu or their Pop OS. It's obvious these guys know what's best. Their 13 inch laptop even comes with a full size drop down ethernet port. It's like some relic from some bygone era. The only real disappointment here, apart from the price and sheer fogginess, is the battery life. It's hard to put a finger on exactly what the battery life will be given the possible variations in specs, but TechRadar tested an i7 13 inch version and they barely scraped four hours of web browsing. So, and that's the 13 inch version by the way. So um, this is probably one I'd skip. Oh, and also they only ship from the US, so import fees. So on to probably my favorites on this list and that is Chromebooks. Yes, they do only come with Chrome OS, though they can be modded to run Linux. And once you get them working, Chromebooks are absolutely great for Linux. They're cheap, low spec, though still with good enough specs to do most things. And they have absolutely great battery life. I had to Dell Chromebook 13 for a while, and while that is one of the more premium Chromebooks, it cost me 300 quid, which is roughly $400. And for that, I had a fully compatible laptop. I ran Kali on it. It even had a backlit keyboard and all that with 10 plus hours of battery life. It was, it was great. Though as for that setup, from what I remember, it was really involved, so I'd only recommend this option if you have some patience. Though if you're running Linux at all, you have to have some patience, so maybe that makes that downside redundant. Up to you. <laughs> also, if you plan on doing this, keep in mind the memory limitations of Chromebooks. You might want to upgrade to that 16 gigs of uh, flash storage. Also, for the love of God, get an Intel-based Chromebook. Thank me later. And do make sure to research the specific Chromebook you're getting extensively to make sure everything is compatible and you won't run into any issues down the road. And on to number four, I thought I should mention what you should probably avoid. 
You might remember I made a video on the Pinebook a while back. It's a cheapo $89 Linux laptop. I, I do recommend checking out that video. I'll link it in the description. But since then, I've got a ton of people asking me whether it would make a good secondary laptop. And to that, I have to say no. While it might seem like a good option here, coming in at only $89 for the 11 inch version and having roughly the power of a Pi, which, which is decent. For a dedicated laptop, I'd really just recommend looking elsewhere. The thing can barely handle web browsing on their stripped down uh, browser, I forget what it was. If you want something to mess around with Linux on, just pay this but more. Unless you're using that thing as anything more than a dumb terminal, you're probably wasting your time. Last but not least, with good port selection and timeless design, it's the classic secondhand ThinkPad. You can pick up 2011, 12, 13 model ThinkPads on eBay for real cheap. Take this ThinkPad X220 option, for example, it comes with a ton of customization options and you could easily get yourself a laptop here for less than 150 quid. And you could even try messaging the seller and ask them if they'd sell you it without Windows installed for a couple of quid less. However, if you're gonna get a ThinkPad, buy a new battery. <laughs> A lot of these laptops will come with their original battery, which may have, as this listing says, one hour of standby time, which is uh, diabolical. Kind of defeats the purpose of having a laptop. However, there does seem to be a thriving community behind these ThinkPads. The Ubuntu site even has a section where they list old ThinkPads and their individual compatibility issues. Hence, this option seems to be a relatively decent choice, as long as you don't mind a rather bulky solution. So those are some of my top picks, though there are tons of good options. If I've missed out your favorite laptop on here, then I'm sorry, but there's not enough time. <laughs> I'm sure you'll let me know about it down in the comments. The great thing about Linux is there's a ton of community support. So if you do have a question about a specific laptop, then Google it and you'll probably find an answer. And if you don't, then you can post on forums and someone will help you out, I'm sure. Me being me, forgot to film a proper outro, though if you like this video, remember to like it, subscribe if you haven't already, let me know what you thought down in the comments, and as always, stay tuned for more hacking videos, have a good one.